Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for August 5th, 2020, recorded on 1.22 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, taking a look here at the latest sea surface temperature anomalies that's updated as of yesterday, a couple things to point out here. First of all, we noticed this very persistent area of cooling. This is basically our La Nina-type pattern now beginning to take shape here across the equatorial Pacific regions. And again, this is very important because what's going to end up happening is the Atlantic Basin is going to take over. You have uh, pretty unfavorable conditions setting up across the Eastern Pacific Basin uh, for a longer duration time. Uh, again, some seasonal uh, variations, interseasonal variations, will obviously enhance the Eastern Pacific from time to time. Uh, but basically, most of the rising airs over Africa and the uh, Western Atlantic Basin over here and the Western Atlantic as a whole is running quite a bit above the long-term average with these sea surface temperatures uh, running about one to one half degrees Celsius above the long-term average. Again, this is very significant because this is going to add ample fuel and uh, instability into the atmosphere down here in the deep tropics. And that is going to mainly be playing out for a very busy, potentially hyperactive hurricane season this year. And you notice these very warm ocean temperatures extend all the way out here into uh, the Caribbean as well, the Gulf of Mexico, with only now a few couple of cooler splotches now uh, from the upwelling effect of Hurricane Hannah. Uh, you kind of notice where we had the, the some upwelling effect here uh, from Hurricane Isaias. You can see if we zoom in here and kind of scroll over to there, you notice some of these uh, blobs over here with cooler than normal anomalies are right out where we should be for this time of the year. That's basically showing where we have some of the upwelling effect from Hurricane Isaias, which again made landfall in North Carolina a couple of days ago. Um, and that is now kind of off the picture. It caused a lot of damage for the North Carolina and the Northeastern uh, United States here. And again, we will be kind of documenting everything and we'll talk about the documentation that we got from Hurricane Isaias here uh, towards the end of the video. So stick around for that. So Colorado State University, they released uh, on today, August 5th, they did release their uh, newest uh, seasonal predictions here for the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season. Most notably increased the uh, forecast to include now 24 named storms. That includes Arthur, uh, Arthur through Isaias. So all the storms that have formed so far, they're now predicting 24 named storms with 12 hurricanes. So we got 10 more to go and five major hurricanes with an accumulated cyclone energy ACE index, basically uh, your uh, points, if you will, of 200 and the normal is 106. So they are forecasting us to get into the Greek alphabet this year. And again, that has only been done, I believe, maybe once or twice, uh, definitely 2005. But this will put us in the record of, of getting closer to 2005's numbers. Uh, it's still a little bit off, but that is something very concerning. If you haven't taken hurricane ser uh, season seriously yet, you better now because when the peak of the season's here, you'll know it's here. And in terms of that, we have uh, tentatively chosen to increase our numbers for the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season. This is the pie chart view, basically. We are uh, forecasting right now for a 55% chance of a hyperactive season with uh, over, that would be over 22 named storms with an above average season, which goes up to about 21 named storms of 39% a 6% chance of only seeing about 12 named storms. And because we're pretty much already there, about 12 to 15. And the below normal, basically 0% because we're already going to appear uh, in the above normal range. So that is certainly something that is uh, of a concerning note. And the numbers, basically, we are forecasting 19 to 26 named storms with 9 to 14 hurricanes and 4 to 7 major hurricanes. Uh, this is certainly something that you guys want to pay attention to. And again, this uh, really is driven by the fact of these very warm sea surface temperature anomalies up through here. And we'll talk about some of the other uh, statistics going into this forecast here in just a moment. If you take a look here, this is our upper ocean heat content values, basically your water depth 
And again, what you're really looking for is what you see out here in the Caribbean. These water, these uh, ocean uh, depths here, are running in the 75 to 150 range. This is your uh, upper third of the upper ocean heat content scale. And again, once you start getting really even into the greens, you start to notice a pretty significant jump in the available uh, instability and latent heat release potential in the atmosphere. And that is certainly something to note. You also notice out here in the deep tropics how even you know, this lighter shade of blue still uh, represents a pretty significant number of upper ocean heat content value, which is now kind of creeping its way uh, far into the North Atlantic Basin, almost encompassing all of the Cabo Verde Islands at this point. And that is certainly something that, that is uh, needs to be kind of taken into consideration is that these tropical waves now, when they come off, they're going to be working now within a more favorable thermodynamic environment. Whereas earlier in the season, you know, early to, to mid-July, you didn't have a lot of this uh, OHC values, the upper ocean heat content values. And you need some sort of upper ocean heat content values to sustain an intense tropical cyclone, one that can feed off the, the water uh, temperature depth and the, the skin temperatures as well. But these values out here in the Caribbean and the Western Atlantic Basin are just absurd. I mean, you even notice how Hannah, you know, first of all, Hurricane Hannah didn't really upwell any cooler water. And Hurricane Isaias didn't upwell any cooler water except at the skin temperature, basically. So, you know, it, it's something that, that needs to be taken into consideration that, you know, these two systems didn't upwell much, much of any cooler water. And you can see out here in the Caribbean, you know, especially near Jamaica and off the coast of Belize, uh, you know, off of the tip of Cuba there, uh, Hispaniola, you know, as a whole, uh, Puerto Rico even. These values are very concerning. They go all the way up here to the coastline. Normally, you see some mixing within the shallower, uh, the, the shallower temperatures there or the shallower waters there of along the coast. But you're not seeing that here. And that's very concerning because if you get anything coming in through here, you know, at the right time, you're just going to have, you know, something to really be mindful of. So that is certainly something to, to take note of and something very concerning, you know, and not a lot really gets me concerned, but that has me certainly concerned that these values are literally off the charts here. So is there anything going on? Well, first of all, in the Eastern Pacific Basin, we do have an area of disturbance here. Uh, with a moderate chance of development over the next five days or so. Again, this is going to be working off towards the west-northwest here. Uh, really not expecting any significant impacts for the the uh, the, uh, the islands here and certainly uh, the Cabo San Lucas Resort areas, uh, Mexico, and um, you know those areas, the Gulf of California. Not really expecting anything, no significant land threats uh, for that area. There's still too much of a persistent ridge out here that's kind of steering these things away from land. But we'll be watching this, and of course, if anything uh, is concerning, and if everything, and if anything does threaten land, of course, we will be here to talk about it immediately. In the Atlantic Basin, again, not a lot to talk about here. There is a chance for development here over the next five days in the southwestern Atlantic Basin with a 10% chance, I do believe, uh, of development over the, the next couple of days or so. Again, this is not really going to pose any significant threat. The upper level winds and dry air right now is going to be killing this system off. Uh, this is the old kind of remnants of 94L. Not really expecting any uh, development out of that over the next few days or so. So here's what I said about uh, increasing our numbers. This is basically, this is from uh, Michael Ventress over there at uh, IBM Weather Company and Weather Channel. This is taking a look here at your velocity potentials and your convectively coupled Kelvin waves. This is basically showing the suppressed and rising air in the atmosphere and your, uh, your yellows and oranges are your suppressed phases of the Kelvin wave that basically squashes any development out there across the deep tropics and the Atlantic Basin, and conversely, where you see these uh, blues in here, this is your rising air in the atmosphere. This tends to enhance uh, favorability for tropical cyclone genesis 
uh, across those uh, areas retrospectively. So again, what you're taking a look here, we do have a suppressed Kelvin wave that is passing over the Atlantic Basin now. So that is why 94L is really located in an unfavorable environment. We have sinking air that's kind of dominating and plaguing uh, the Atlantic Basin right now because of the suppressed uh, Kelvin wave. This is rapidly moving off towards the east here. So this is kind of retrograding back uh, to over Africa. And then as we go on throughout the next several weeks or so, we're going to have a, uh, a good uh, constructive interference with the Kelvin wave. This next convectively coupled Kelvin wave is going to pass from the Eastern Pacific that's igniting some development there currently and into the Atlantic Basin and then retrograding over back into Africa. And these are basically, these are the interseasonal variabilities. You have these suppressed and rising phases uh, your suppressed and uh, con convection allowing uh, phases in the atmosphere. And again, these will shift from time to time. You'll get these suppressed waves to come over and right behind that will be followed by an active phase. So these different phases are kind of what drives your interseasonal variability in the deep tropics. So right now, we're looking for not much development within the next about five days or so, and that's why you're not seeing anything really percolating out there in the deep tropics. But after the next five days or so, it looks like we're going to have to start watching as an active uh, active phase of the Kelvin wave is expected to cross into the Atlantic Basin. And once this retrogrades back over Africa, this could ignite some development uh, of the African easterly waves and the African standing wave. Again, these uh, suppressed phases might kind of temporarily temper uh, with the the um, Af African standing wave, basically your uh, standing wave of instability and rising air. This might temporarily shut that off, but when you get a uh, active phase to come through, it will kind of reignite ignite it. And once you see that reignition is when you'll start to see these tropical waves really get going again. You can have development in a suppressed phase like we saw with uh, Tropical Storm Gonzalo uh, a couple of weeks ago. Um, but again, you're, it's not likely to see development uh, during a suppressed phase. And this is also something to take a mindful of. Again, this is from Michael Ventress as well. This is your Madden-Julian oscillation, the velocity uh, potential at 200 millibars in the atmosphere, way high up there. Your reds in here are indicative of your suppressed Madden-Julian oscillation, uh, your sinking air in the atmosphere, while these blues and purples are your rising air in the atmosphere, allowing for uh, deep convection to build. Again, what you're looking at, this is basically a, a two-week forecast starting from today and going out throughout the next two weeks. This basically goes out through August 19th. And you see that we're in the suppressed uh, Madden-Julian oscillation phase right now. However, we were also in that suppressed phase uh, during Hannah, Gonzalo, and Isaias. So the Madden-Julian oscillation as of 2020 well, it doesn't seem, the atmosphere doesn't seem to care too much. But regardless, we're in a suppressed Madden Julian oscillation phase along with the Kelvin wave. Uh, this basically will help the deep tropics to kind of stay quiet, at least for the next five days or so. But you notice out here by the week two forecast, we start to see uh, this kind of, uh, the, the suppressed phase kind of roll past the Atlantic Basin in Africa. And then you kind of get this extension of your um, MGO, your positive rising air in the atmosphere to extend uh, now coming further to the east over the eastern Pacific. And then that will kind of retrograde uh, partly into the Atlantic Basin. But again, there is probably some biases. I'm not exactly sure uh, in terms of exactly which biases, but this, there seems to be this suppressed bias over Africa in the Indian Ocean. That will be something that I'll have to kind of take a deeper dive into. But that does seem to be a little bit too suppressed for what we're seeing right now uh, with the African standing wave favoring convection across this area. So I'll take a look into that, but that certainly, don't take it for face value, but again, take these models for a grain of salt, of course, because these models are guidance, not gospel. So what's going on out, out, out here across the deep tropics? Well, what we're looking at here is the GFS. This is your 500 millibar geopotential heights here, basically 18,400 feet in the atmosphere, taking a look at the ridge strength. Your deeper reds uh, over here indicate your stronger ridge, your stronger areas have, uh, of high pressure, while conversely, your, or your yellows and greens up here indicate areas of lower pressure. 
So one thing that we're really going to be taking a look on, first of all, you notice how some development, development might be reinitiated over the eastern Pacific Basin as that enhanced uh, convectively coupled Kelvin wave is going to pass through this region. We'll be watching for land threats, but not seeing anything right now. But you notice one thing that we are seeing, this very strong ridge of high pressure in the deep tropics across the Atlantic Basin, and we'll just kind of go out throughout the next about 150 hours here. This takes us through about uh, mid-August. This is by August 11th. And again, you notice that, well, nothing was going on out here across the deep tropics right now. We notice that this very persistent ridging of high pressure is just kind of interconnected through here. This would tend to send these tropical waves barreling towards the west here, not really allowing for them to turn out to see as much. And for what it's worth, the European model as well is showing much of the same thing throughout the next five days. And this is kind of a representation of the larger environment and kind of larger picture in the atmosphere where basically this ridging is going to be stronger this year, which is going to force more of these tropical waves barreling towards the west. So again, it's just something to be mindful of. We're not expecting any development. And to take a look at that, this is our 850 millibar uh, vorticity in the atmosphere, your spin at the 5,000 foot level. This is the remnants of Hurricane Isaias over here that made landfall uh, in North Carolina near Oak Island in Oak, uh, in Oak Isle uh, the other day. And that is now moving off towards the north and east. It eventually kind of recurves, something like that, around the periphery of the subtropical ridge. But you notice that we do curiously have another tropical wave here that we'll have to keep, them, uh, keep an eye on over the next couple of days or so. Some of the modeling, especially on the European ensembles, have tried to pick up on development out in this region over the next five days or so. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, but we're not expecting any development now throughout the next five days. So as a reminder, this is now time to kind of where you want to take your, you know, you need to start splicing up your hurricane preparedness plans. You need to start thinking about things. You know, we talked about it. Isai, you know, Isaias, you know, really should have, you know, kind of turned those al alarm brains on, especially in the Northeast and Southeast United States. You know, and of course the islands, Hannah for, you know, the Gulf Coast states, you know, Gonzalo for the islands. Everyone needs to start paying attention as we head towards the peak of the Atlantic uh, season, the Atlantic hurricane season. It's only going to get more active from here. And again, we're not trying to say that to scare you, but we want you to be prepared. Now, real quickly, what's going on out there across the, the deep tropics as a whole, across the, the entire Atlantic uh, and the entire tropics, the global tropics, basically. There's Invest Area 94 out there. This is the remnants of Hurricane Isaias. The remnants of a trop or a typhoon that made landfall here uh, in the western Pacific Basin, but you notice pretty much shut down across here. There's virtually no areas for development except in the eastern Pacific, one air area to watch. And then we'll be turning our attention out to this area uh, over the next couple of weeks or so as we gear up for the peak of the Atlantic hurricane season. Well, once again, I am working on data collection from Hurricane Isaias. Again, this is put together all by me and uh, with the help of some uh, tools that we're using here just to kind of give a little bit of a summary. This is basically from our, uh, from our Python script here. Uh, but again, basically, this is a data collection. This PowerPoint will be available uh, for download on my website at a uh, point in time. I'll be working to get all the... Uh, I'm working on getting a collection of uh, data points from Hurricane Irma, Dorian, and now uh, Isaias. Uh, three storms that I directly got um, data collection on, and we're going to try to be integrating them into the website uh, as quickly as we can. These will probably take a, a period of, of probably about four to six weeks to gather all the data, uh, code it all up, and put it onto our website and whatnot. Again, this is basically just using um, our weather station and a couple other measurements that we had uh, during uh, those three events. So we'll be working on getting a summary for all of these events and kind of getting all the data collection points for them. And we'll be putting up on our website for download uh, so you guys can kind of look over everything that, that we have collected. But again, uh, if you guys do want to support what we're doing, make sure to go follow me on Twitter at micromally one Links will be down in the description down below. And subscribe to our YouTube channel for more awesome content coming, our, uh, coming your way, as well as an all-inclusive look at our Hurricane Camera System project 
project. And for one, we will be using that for hurricane landfalls this year, if any certainly do come close enough. All right. Hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll see you guys back here then tomorrow afternoon. Stay safe, everyone. I'll talk to you tomorrow.